good, Tarlock. Time on week, Lord, or on PMB show. Gahara had my yal, or cut a harlot as Savita Halapanaver in Yal of Lejani. Savita Halapanaver is not the first person who would lose her life due to the failing of Irish law to protect the health of women. In 1983, shortly after the passing of the supposed pro life amendment, Sheila died, having been taken off her cancer treatment after becoming pregnant. Her husband, Brendan, said at the time, and I quote, I went to see Sheila one night, and she was in absolute agony. She was literally screaming at this stage. I could hear her from the front door of the hospital, and she was in a ward on the fourth floor. I saw the sister, and she produced a doctor who said nothing that made any sense. That was 30 years ago. It still doesn't make any sense. It could never make sense that 30 years after the agonizing death of Sheila Hodgers in Our Lady of Lourdes, and 20 years after the scandal of the X case, we are still here, still nowhere. Still, despite all that has happened in the last week, despite the needless death of a vital and promising young woman, Savita Halapanavar, we remain nowhere. We still have elected representatives, people who claim to be leaders, buckling in cowardice at the fear of an anti-woman rump in our society, who told us what we could and couldn't do for far, far too long. There is no justification for the absence of legislation in line with the X case. It is quite simply a basic recognition of a woman's right to live as an individual, a human being, and not an incubator, who is less important than a few more days of gestation for a hopeless pregnancy which will not and cannot survive. It is a story which shamed us all but a brave few. I have held my view on this matter for a long time, and I have been unswerving in it. I never denied my position. I took part in marches and in my own way campaigned, but I regret not doing more and prioritizing this issue more. I cannot deny that the very extreme reactions of groups like Youth Defence or Spook were very off-putting. They created a situation where many good people stayed silent for fear of being shouted down in the most vicious of ways. Last Saturday, I marched again through the streets of Dublin with thousands upon thousands of people, united in their desire to see a woman's right to health care realised and respected. I stood, I stood with people born after X, with people who were children, when we last voted in a referendum to uphold the X case ruling against a cynical attempt to roll back the rights it defined. I stood with people who had campaigned in 1983 people who saw all this ahead of us. I stood with people who rode the trains from Belfast to Dublin, their pockets loaded with condoms in defiance of another archaic law far too long upheld. I stood with the best people in this country, those who have fought and would fight for real change, for the better of all our lives, and will not bow down to those who seek to control them as children who cannot be trusted to know their own good. I was truly moved by their frustration, their grief and their anger at the death of Savita. I shared these feelings, but in that crowd of people who had never met this young one, or probably anyone belonging to her, it was so palpable. It was only equaled by the determination of a people who will not accept failure, equivocation or bargain. They are determined to win what is their right. Because for them, this is not an abstraction. This is not a lofty debate over life or morality. This is their right not to die because they are less equal to every person when they become pregnant. In that crowd were Savitas, Sheilas, God forbid, Xs and As and Cs. There was the 12 women who traveled to the UK every day. There was the one in, the, the one in roughly every 10 women, one and everyone else knows who had an abortion. They were the women of Ireland, with their husbands, partners, brothers and fathers in tow. I can't help think of the many baby girls that might be born today. I know the facts that women are still not equal in our society. These girls will have it harder than a boy born today, even less if, than so their mothers and their grandfathers. I, like others here, am in this chamber to do what I can to end that inequality, to ensure that men and women together live a good life in a country they can be proud of. 
I am ashamed that a girl born into this country today is born into a country where women die being refused proper treatment. I do not want that to be the country the next generation grows up in. Many of us have had our children and raised them. Let us do something for those who are coming after us, those who are now starting families or are only meeting their family for the first time. Let us give them the peace of mind that they know in Irish hospitals the health of women is never compromised. At present, this is a country which values women's health and welfare very cheaply. When rape can incur a mere 15,000 euro fine or 5,000 to beat your girlfriend until her face is irreparably scarred, can we really be surprised that appropriate health care is not available to all women in all circumstances? I know that many will make the argument that we must not rush, that we must give time to properly determine the steps forward based on the expert group's findings. But this is not the first expert group. This is not 1993. We have not rushed. We have been dragged, kicking and screaming into the light, and made to stare our cowardice in the face 20 years on. If we need an expert group to tell us still what is so plainly the right thing to do, if you need an expert to tell you what way is up and what way is down, then you can come to no other conclusion that you are lost. You may be lost, but the people are not. They are more and more certain. And they are also certain that we are not going back, that they will not relent until justice is won. This is not the right thing to do simply as a matter of responsibility, to clear up the gap between constitutional rights and legislative rights which exist. It is the right thing to do because it is about recognising a woman's right to be treated properly, to have her life saved. saved. It is the right thing to do because it is what the people want. Do not get distracted by things not ruled for under X. To reject this call because you are opposed to more liberalisation of abortion would be to completely disregard the constitutional reality of this state and to refuse the people of Ireland their choice in deciding what is best and in their best interests. It is entirely undemocratic and wrong, and it is a dereliction of your duty to legislate for the good people of Ireland and, and their will. Another important issue to mention is how the Safita case has been dealt with and how we are setting about to find out the exact circumstances of her death. Her widower, Pravin, I feel is totally justified in his misgivings about the originally proposed setup. This would constitute, I feel, a conflict of interest on the part of Galway Hospital staff appointed to the board. I welcome the HSE's recognition of that fact today, stating that Praveen's concerns were extremely serious. Praveen has rightly called for a full and public investigation in what is a very credible case of grave mistreatment of Savita by her medical team and potentially the negligent state which failed to give doctors the sufficient guidelines to avoid any such circumstances arising. I would call on the government to do all in their power to ensure an investigation into Savita's death, which is totally independent and is only interested in revealing the truth of what really happened. In conclusion, I want to seriously and genuinely ask the government TDs and those in Fianna Fáil and any reluctant independents to support this motion and the legislation that would flow from it. Do not cop out and, so and support a cutting amendment and wait and see. Do not either fear the backlash of a right-wing rump which is long past its prime and rapidly becoming a spent force. They have opposed every progressive step this state has taken and held our people back with fear, hatred and misinformation. Their time is over. Vote with us. Keep the momentum going towards a last to change in this law and give women the peace of mind that they will be cared for in, preg in pregnancy. It is our duty to legislate. It is not cynical or opportunities. It is cynical the way this government has avoided this for the last 20 years. For only